Welcome to the screencast on model drawing for increasingly complex problems for fourth grade. This is one of many screencasts covering model drawing. If you are new to model drawing, I recommend that you first view the model drawing for second and third grade screencasts. Both videos can be found on the same website where this video is posted. This is the website address. Our first model drawing problem is a multiplication problem. It reads, a ribbon that's 1,530 inches long is cut into two pieces. The length of one piece is two times the length of the other. What is the length of the longer piece? The first step is to write a sentence statement. Since we have to find out the answer to the question, what is the length of the longer piece, my sentence statement will be, the longer piece of ribbon is blank inches long. Now I'm ready to identify the important information. We have a ribbon that starts out 1,530 inches long and then is cut into two pieces. One of the pieces is two times the length of the other piece. Since I know this is a multiplication problem, I'm going to start out with both pieces of ribbon the same length and then I will adjust them. Since one piece is two times the length of the other, I'm going to add another same size length to this, to this first piece here. Next, I'll put the question mark in for the longer piece because that's what we have to find. We know that the ribbon started out 1,530 inches long, so I'll go ahead and show that our total will add up to that. The model is ready to talk to us and tell us what to do for the math. We first need to find out how long each section is, and we know that there are three units and they total 1,530. That means that one unit will be 1,530 divided by 3, which is 510 inches. Now we can fill those unit bars in. Now I can find out the length of the longer piece by adding 510 plus 510 to get 1,020. The longer piece of ribbon is 1,020 inches long. This is a similar problem to the one we just worked. A piece of fabric that's 1,640 feet long is cut into two pieces. The length of one piece is three times the length of the other. What is the length of the longer piece? What do you think my sentence statement should be? How about the longer piece of fabric is blank feet long? What information is important to solving this, solving this problem? A piece of fabric that's 1,640 feet long is cut into two pieces, and one piece is three times the length of the other. Again, I will start out with two equal sized pieces of ribbon and adjust them. Since one piece is three times the length of the other, I'll add two more equal sized pieces to my first ribbon. Before I can jump into the math, I need to fill in my question mark and what I know. Can you see what we have to do now? We need to find out the length of each unit. Since I know that four units, that's how many we have, is equal to 1,640 feet, that means that one unit equals 1,640 divided by 4, which is 410. Let's go ahead and fill those unit bars in. Now what? Well, we need to find out how long the longer piece is, and our model tells us that we need to multiply 410 by 3, which is 1,230. The longer piece of fabric is 1,230 feet long. Let's look at a part-whole division problem now. A man divided his fortune of $92,000 into eight equal parts. He gave four portions to his wife, one portion to his son, and divided the rest equally among three charities. How much more money did the wife receive than the son? What do you think the sentence statement should be? How about the wife received blank more dollars than the son? What do you think the important information is in this problem? The fortune is divided into eight equal parts, four go to his wife, one to his son, and the rest is divided equally among three charities. We also want to be very aware that we are being asked to find out not how much money the wife received, but how much more she received than the son. Since this is a division problem, I should start out with my whole. So I drew one unit bar to represent $92,000. Next, we are told that it was divided into eight equal sized pieces, so this is what it looks like now. Now I'll designate each unit to their respective recipients. His wife gets four units, his son gets one, and the remaining three go to charity. 
Since we need to find out how much more the wife received than the son, I will cross out the units they have in common. And you can see that she has three more units than he does. Now I need to fill in my question mark. My next step is to figure out how much each unit is worth. If eight units are equal to $92,000, then one unit is equal to $92,000 divided by eight units total, which is $11,500. Each unit is equal to $11,500. I think I'd be satisfied with even one share of this gentleman's fortune. What about you? The final step is to calculate how much more the wife received. Since she received three more units, 3 times $11,500 equals $34,500. The wife received $34,500 more than the son. This problem is just like the last one. A woman divided her collection of 1,200 books into 10 equal parts. She gave three portions to her husband, four portions to her daughter, and the rest equally to three nieces. How many books did her daughter receive? What should my problem statement be? How about her daughter received blank books? What is the important information in this problem? 1,200 books are divided into 10 equal parts. Three portions were given to her husband, four parts to her daughter, and the rest equally to three nieces. Again, this is a division problem, so we'll start with our whole of 1,200 books. Now we have to divide it. How many ways? That's right, 10. Now, let's designate which parts go to each person. Three parts to her husband, four parts to her daughter, and three parts to her nieces. Where does the question mark go? That's right, we need to know how many books her daughter gets. So we bracket those pieces and put our question mark. Can you see what our first step will be? Yes, I need to find out how many books are in each portion. If 10 units equals 1,200 books, then one unit equals 1,200 divided by 10, which is 120 books per portion. The last step is to multiply the daughter's four parts by 120, which is 480. Her daughter received 480 books. Wow, that's a lot of books. I want to show you a couple of easy rate problems, then we'll be finished for this video. Andrew can type 55 words per minute. How many words can he type in eight minutes? My sentence statement will be, Andrew can type blank words in eight minutes. The important information is that he can type 55 words per minute. Rate problems look a little different with bar modeling, but they still make a whole lot of sense and give the problem solver a picture to follow in solving the problem. I'll start with what we know. We know that Andrew can type 55 words in one minute. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Now we want to find out how many words he types in 8 minutes. Well, we already have 1 minute, so let's just add on 7 more minute units. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now it's easy to see how many words Andrew types in 8 minutes because the units are talking, so to speak. We will simply multiply 55 times 8, which is 440. Andrew can type 440 words in 8 minutes. This is the last one and it's just like the last problem. I want you to pause the video and solve this problem on your own. When you are finished, restart the video and check your answer. Did you remember to write your problem statement? Did you identify the important information? Did you start with one unit bar representing 15 poems and one hour? Did you add two more unit bars onto it? And finally, did you multiply 15 times 3 to find that Eddie can write 45 poems in 3 hours? This concludes our 4th grade model drawing screencast. I hope you will take the time to explore other Singapore Math strategy videos. Singapore Math is just plain good math.